Hello guys, you're welcome to Photostock X Academy. Alright, so I'm bringing you something very, very beautiful today. I want to show you how you can, in less than 10 minutes, 10 minutes here, yeah, in less than 10 minutes, edit your full studio portrait from beginning to end, including background. And the beautiful part of it is that we are giving out the background we are using in this video to you for free. And I have another good news. We have generated over 500 hyper-realistic backgrounds that you can use in your studio portrait and change the game for yourself. So from this hyper-realistic backgrounds we've generated, we are going to be picking one. We are going to be picking one and we'll be giving it out to you for free and we are going to be using it in the video. So if you want to have de get details on how you can actually get the fi over 500 hyper-realistic background upscaled images, just go to the description of the video. You are going to see a link that will give you the access you need. Okay, so without wasting your time, let's get straight into work. So what I'm going to do first is that I'm going to go to my action, my done for you retouch action. We've been using it for some time now. If you probably want to know how you can get this action, it's still in the description below. So I'll just go straight to my done for you action and I'll press play. So at this point, I'm going to place it somewhere around 0 0.8 because 0 .8 I want it to pass smooth. I want this super smooth, so I'm going to do that and wait for it. Beautiful. So that's done, right? Yeah, that's done. So look at the image. This is before, this is after, this is before, this is after. See the way it just changes everything about the picture in less than a few seconds. And we are done. So I'm going to obviously flatten it just to make, to keep the whole thing simple. You can equally try using your auto, auto dodge and burn right now, but I'm going to use that later at the end, towards the end of the video. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the background, separate the image from the background, then import our background. Remember we said in less than 10 minutes. So let's see how that goes. So I'm going to select inverse, zoom in a little to fix the selection and make sure it's not in places I don't want it to be. Yeah, I think the hair is okay. Nice. Okay. So look at the tip of the shoe. So just remove that and we are good to go. Okay. So there is one more area here that we need to select just somewhere in here. So remove this part, remove this part and we are good to go. So I'm going to duplicate the background. Don't use control J press right click on the image and select layer via cut hold your control, reload the selection, or you can actually right click and reload the selection. Press go to filter, go to blur, Gaussian blur. So I'm going to blur this background out until it appears smooth. Then I'll press OK and press Ctrl D to deselect. So one more thing I want you to do is to make sure that your image layer is above only, just above here, the background below it, then minimize your Photoshop. Go and locate the background you want to use. So for this particular one, um, we'll be using this background over here. So I notice the background is in a landscape mode. When the image we are doing, we are editing is in portrait mode. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to recrop the background like this. I'm going to recrop the background, maybe somewhere like this. Yeah. So I will give it space. I want it somewhere high. Yeah. So I'll give it space downwards so I can be able to get uh, stuff there. Then I will select my market tool, make a selection, go to my edit, content aware scale, hold your shift and just scale here in, so you will just get extra floor, yeah. So that's one way you can get extra floor. So even it like this, now I have a background I want to use. I'm going to unlock the layer, drag it over, and place it over my image, just like that. Nice. So I'm going to find the anchor point where it's going to work. So this is, sorry, I need to make sure it's in my background. Make sure it's your background, you're moving around, you're not your image. So this is where my anchor point should be. So I will just make a... I'll just load the transformation tool and place my anchor point in her neck and just scale in holding your alternate. So once you do that, your anchor point is going to scale that image in, in that perspective. So if you look at it right now, it's looking like she is standing right in front of the background. So that's what your anchor point does. I think I need it. I need her to come a little closer. Beautiful. So I'll press OK. Now, the next thing I want us to do is to change the blend mode simply. We've been using this trick for some time now in our videos, and I believe it has been helping you. So what I want us to do is to just press go to normal and change the blend mode to overlay. So before we do that, before we do that, 
So I'm going to come back to this. I wanted to, I missed a step. So I'm going to delete this background. Yeah, I'll just delete it, get it back again. What I want to do is I want to do my auto skin tone matching. So the reason I didn't do it inside that, uh, inside that place is because it's going to mess the whole thing up. I'm not even sure this is going to work entirely well, but let's see how that goes. Wow. Okay. So we got our skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the mask. I'll delete the mask and reload a new mask. So it's, it's going to target just her skin. Yeah. I'll reload a new mask. So this should be above. I wouldn't want it touching the background. Yeah, like that. So clip it to the lady. Nice. Okay. So see, let me show you before and after we did the skin tone matching. So this is before. This is after. Before, after. I think I need to increase the opacity just slightly. Nice. Okay. So we'll have before, we'll have after. So the reason I did that was just to make sure that we have a very uh, similar skin tone. Now we can start with our editing. So I'm going to delete this. We don't need this here. Beautiful. So we'll have it here before, after. Yeah, so th think this is too much. Nice. Okay. So let's go straight to our background. So we'll repeat the same process. Drag it over like this. Place it over. Yes. Place your anchor points. Maybe you get where it should be. That place is nice. Place it here, then scale it in. Very, very simple. So you can decide to retain those frames, but I think she should come a, lit a little bit more closer to make it look very realistic. So I want to place it just directly here. Nice. So press OK. Change the blend mode to overlay quickly. Pick up your brush to create a mask for your original background. So what we want to do now is I want to add or unveil the original shadow. So that's what we are trying to do. Yeah, so we can get her standing right on the floor there. Nice. So we need her that shape here as well. Beautiful. So we'll have this working and we're good to go. So you see that she's right in the background. She's right in the background. So you can zoom towards the hair to make sure you have a good selection there as well. So I think this is revealing some textures I do not want. Let's go around the hair just like that. Nice. Okay, so one more thing I want us to do is that I want us to do our glow, our auto dodge and bar right now. So I'm going to click that and wait for it to load up. So I'll pick up my brush and clean it. Just clean her face with the brush here like that. Don't worry, we're going to drop the whole opacity down. I think it's practically too much. So just reduce the opacity of the auto dodge and bone. Just to have extra dimensions to our image, this is still too much. Yeah, nice. I think the highlight is still too strong. So somewhere around 20, 20, 21 is going to work. So the last thing I want us to do is do a global color grading that will bring the whole thing together. So you can use any technique, you can use any style that works for you. But one particular style I would want to use ASAP is just to go to my gradient map, go to my legacy support, select photographic toning, photographic toning, then select any warm tone or any warm color, change the blend mode to soft light, reduce the opacity. Yeah, just like that. So we can decide to now go back into our photographic toning and see if we are going to get something better. All right. So I think that highlights the white area. I do not want it. So I'm going to delete that. So I want to keep everything warm. So this is before, this is after. So we'll zoom in to make sure we have a good one. So we need to reduce the opacity. Yeah. You can equally move around with your blend mode and check other blend mode options that will work for your image. Oh, this is not bad. Let's see. Let's zoom out and see the overall look of that. Okay, so it's creating some banding over here, which we wouldn't want to have in our image, but it's still quite very beautiful. Still quite very beautiful. So I'm going to stick with that, with our linear light, linear burn. Yeah, rather we'll just drop down the whole trend. Okay, so I'm going to create a stand visible layer, Control shift alternate it, go to my camera raw, and just pop up colors, and we are good to go. We are done. So I'm going to go straight to my calibration, just give it a little bit of saturation, go to my color mixer, punch up the purpose of the clothes she's wearing, like that, yeah. You can equally try changing colors if you want. I think the purple is just the best color, the blue is not bad. Okay, so we'll have it at the purples. Just punch it up a little if you wish to. Then maybe create a vignette effect to 
bring the whole thing, the whole attention to the center. Reduce the highlight just slightly. Yeah, nice. Slightly reduce the highlight. And we are good to go. Our image is done. So this is the overall before and after. So this is before. This is after. This is before. This is after. Let's check it through the history. I think we are missing the retouching before. All right. So this is the image before we started in Photoshop. Yeah. So we took it through some process and we came down here. Thank you very much for watching this amazing video. Do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and on your notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video. Remember, this background is for free. All you need to do is just watch the video till the end and you will get your background. See you on the next one.